Under Marquis Collide's watchful eye, young girls are sold off to wealthy old men at a human auction that opens the novel. With the aid of the wizard Dia Vicorn, his helper Tart, and his astute sister Maha, Lu Tuatha Day, under the authority of the kingdom, started an investigation on Marquis Collide. Following their infiltration of the auction as a slave girl and a maid, respectively, Dia and Tart begin murdering guests and personnel before freeing the enslaved girls. Subsequently, Marquis Collide attempted to flee and rescue herself, but Lu and Maha found her and used their distance to snipe her. After this, a flashback of Lu's previous life as the greatest assassin in his former world is shown, where he was taking out members of a crime syndicate along with his rookie assistant. After killing the targets, the assassin decided to depart. But his rookie assistant suggested that they should kill every single criminal on site. But the assassin replied that they were only hired to kill specific members so he will depart now. As they tried to escape, the assassin and the rookie were intercepted by a drone, which forced them to improvise in order to avoid it. As day broke, the assassin contacted the organization where he announced his intent to retire and become a mentor to future assassins in Japan. Using fake passports, the assassin and the rookie reached a nearby airport and took a flight to Japan. Sadly, the group sets a mine in the cockpit, killing the pilots and creating the impression that the plane was being taken over. This makes the assassin realize he was set up. At first, the assassin tried to save himself, but a military fighter jet shot him down, thinking that the plane was still in terrorist hands. The assassin met a goddess after he passed away. He had two options from the goddess. First, to be born again as someone entirely different, and second, to grant her wish and be born again with his memories unharmed in order to kill a hero. Because she needed the assassin to kill the hero of a different realm. The goddess desired that he choose the second option. The finest assassin consented to kill the hero merely to experience happiness, something he was unable to enjoy in his previous life since he was repressing his feelings. He was given the option to select unique skills and abilities by the goddess, but she also gave him a deadline of 18 years from the date of his birth to eliminate the hero before the hero unleashed havoc on the newly created planet. She also told him that there was a remote chance he could murder the hero and still save the world. Five skills are selected by him, one for each rank. He is then reborn as a child of the Tuatha Day family, a noble house of assassins. As Lu begins his new life, he becomes an expert hunter of animals like Arte rabbits and cook. His physical growth is examined by his father, who concludes that Lu is ready for a special surgery that will give him the ability to perceive magic in a person or an environment. Lu successfully obtains the mystical eyes passed down the Tuatha Day family and his father promises to teach Lu how to perform the surgery when the time comes. He also finds a magic teacher for Lu named Dia Viakane. Dia gives Lu a far stone, a unique gemstone that can gauge a person's ability for magic, in an effort to gauge his magical potential. But Lu's power is so great that the far stone ultimately blows apart. Lu gets the notion to use far stones as homemade grenades as a result. In the weeks that follow, Dia and Lu develop a strong emotional bond. Lu demonstrates his extraordinary aptitude for learning quickly by mastering the synthesis of metals as well as the construction of weaponry. He even learns how to make new spells with Dia. And on their last night together, he gives her a titanium knife as thanks for being his teacher. While she gives him her personal far stone. As Dia departs, Lu's father decides that it is time for Lu to assassinate someone for the first time while explaining the methods of the House of Tuatha Day. His victim is a woman guilty of multiple crimes who tries to plead innocence, but Lu, knowing that the woman is lying, kills her painlessly. Using his mana vision, Lu attempts to find someone who can be both his personal servant and his assistant during assassinations. Sure enough, Lu finds such a person in the form of Tart, a girl from a poor background who had made her way to the Tuatha Day region in hopes for a better life. After rescuing her from a pack of wolves, Lu brings Tart to his home and gets permission from his father to train her as an assassin. When Tart turns 12, 
Lu discovers that while he has mastered spear fighting, he still struggles with wielding smaller weapons like knives. Lu devises a unique retractable spear that Tart may conceal under her clothing in order to alleviate this issue. Lu thinks Tart has turned into a useful ally in his quest to assassinate the hero because she has a powerful weapon at her disposal. With the help of the spells that Dia taught him, Lu has amassed a sizable collection of far stones. He tells his father that he has been watching Tart the entire time and is certain that she is not a spy from a competing area. He does, however. Acknowledge that Tart's accidental wandering into Tuatha Day territory is merely a coincidence, given his exceptionally high magic potential. Lu's father tells him it's time for Lu to confront him in battle to demonstrate that he is prepared to carry out assassinations. In spite of Lu's youth and past life experiences, Qian proves to be a formidable opponent and Lu only beats him by risking his own life. After that, Lu joins Qian in performing assassinations and Qian tells him that, in order to facilitate his work, Lu will have to assume a fake identity as a member of the Balor trading family. Qian holds a party to celebrate Lu's ascension as heir to House of Tuatha Day. Rona, a member from a branch family, disagrees with the decision and challenges Lu to a duel. But he is easily defeated. Even so, Lu gifts him with a special sword so that Rona can continue his training as a knight. The next morning, Lu and Tart depart from the Tuatha Day and begin their journey to Milteu. In the merchant town of Milteu, Maha and her friends toil diligently to make ends meet as Lu and Tart start their lives in the Balor region. Sadly, they are kidnapped by some bandits and brought to an orphanage, which later proves to be a front for a prostitution ring. Except for Maha, Lu, continuing to live as Illig Balor, devises a plan to open a cosmetic store at Milteu to raise money for his murder tasks and boost the Balor family's earnings. In just six months after its debut, he gives his store, Orna, a significant sales bump and a competitive edge by introducing lotions moisturizers, and candies to the world. Nevertheless, in an effort to learn the keys to Lu's success, spies employed by competing companies try to break into his house. With the help of Tart and Maha, Lu captures at least one spy, but is unable to gain any useful information from him. Even when subjecting him to torture. As his business grows, Lu temporarily leaves Milteu and visits Dia in order to increase his magical knowledge. When Tart and Maha wake up from sharing Lu's bed, they smell something odd. As the two uncover the blanket, Lu awakens and discovers that he ejaculated while sleeping, which he interprets as his immature body's desire being active while he's unconscious. Tart adds that as she is his servant, she ought to assist him in this, while Maha quips that although Lu pretends to simply regard her as a sister, his body is being truthful. Feeling ashamed, Lu wonders if everything is still going as planned. Since this is a sign his basic instinct to mate is going to be an issue if he keeps sharing his bed with the girls. Lu returns to Tuatha Day to complete his assassination training after deciding that his time as Illig Balor is over and establishing a successful business in Milteu. Knowing that she intends to take the business into new areas, most importantly, to regain her late father's store. He leaves Maha in charge of Orna and makes a commitment to see her. A pack of wolves assaults Lu and Tart on their way home. But Tart dispatches them with ease, and Lu notes that monster attacks on human villages have increased in frequency, suspecting that the hero will show up soon. Upon his return, Lu is welcomed by his mother and summoned to his father's study, where Kian gives him the choice to give up on the life of an assassin and instead live peacefully as a merchant. Kian admits being too old to do something else with his life. But Lu is still free to choose his own path. However, Lu chooses to keep his current lifestyle, admitting that he has fallen in love with Dia and he won't be able to marry her if he doesn't possess the privileges of the Alvin Kingdoms. Aristocracy. Accepting his son's choice. Kian gives Lu his first target as a fully trained assassin. Count Asba Venkor, an aristocrat who has been trading military secrets to other countries in return for Vizin, a narcotic he distributes throughout the realm, 
is Liu's first target as a fully trained assassin. Liu makes the independent decision to look into the count and assess if the target actually merits being killed using Maha's intelligence network. When Liu and Tart go to Pisiol, the kingdom's second biggest trading town, they bust a gang that is peddling bison. But not before seeing the effects of the drug on a poor girl's mother. Sometime later, Liu and Maha travel to the count's mansion in the Venkor region under the pretense of selling Orna's products which proves to be a success for Orna. As night falls, Liu silently assassinates Count Venkor with his newest weapon, a sniper rifle, but takes the time to watch the grieving wife's reaction. While Liu does not regret taking the Count's life, he promises never to forget this particular mission. As it was the first assassination he performed as a free man rather than as an unfeeling tool. As part of their assassin training, Lu and Tart spend a whole month on a desolate island. When they return to the mainland, Maha tells them about a divine treasure that Lu has been attempting to acquire for some time, an instrument with unfathomable power. Satanta Magnus, a distinguished warrior who is thought to be the fabled hero, is in possession of this celestial treasure, a magical spear known as Guy Bolg. Lu also runs to Dia's residence after learning that the Viacane region is embroiled in a fight, offering her a way to escape should the war reach her doorstep. Dia refuses to abandon her home, stating her obligations to her family and her people. Even so, Lu and Dia decide to enjoy themselves on a date. As Lu returns home, he still thinks he can help Dia escape from the war but Dia has already taken steps to defend herself by fortifying her hometown. Sometime later, a wounded soldier asks the Tuatha Dei family to assassinate Dia. According to Kian, Dia's father gave the order to kill his own daughter in an effort to put an end to the civil war that is presently raging in the Viacane region. Since the Tuatha Dei family has always had the choice to turn down missions based on what interests them, Lu concludes that he can utilize this mission to save Dia after realizing that the battle will not be stopped by Dia's death. Recognizing Lu's affections for Dia, Tart helps him reach the Viacane region in a way that helps him conserve his magical energy and Lu finds that the Viacane mansion is under siege, but is able to make his way to Dia while keeping casualties to a minimum. Meanwhile, Maha's information network has gathered information on the divine treasure Lu has been looking for and Maha decides to relay her findings to Lu immediately. Lu and Dia's father devise a scheme to have Dia pretend to be dead so they can safely smuggle her into the Tuatha Dei area. Sadly, the scheme is foiled before it can be carried out by the appearance of Satanta Magnus. Since Satanta is the Guy Bolg wielder, Lu anticipates that he won't hold out in a straight fight with him. Therefore, he sends a tungsten projectile into the atmosphere with magnetic propulsion, delaying Satanta long enough for it to destroy him. The task is then accomplished when the Tuatha Dei family adopts Dia while pretending she is Lu's younger sister. Later on, Lu finds out that the Alvin Kingdom has welcomed the hero, Lord Epona Rhiannon. 